approfitto per ringraziare la... I would like now to thank Francesca Squillante, Raffaele Vannella e all of the persons who helped us set up the Protocaterine Association, all of the patient families, because the idea of setting up and creating an association of people that can work together, where parents can come together and um, exchange views, where the clinicians may interact uh, together with the families, it's an excellent opportunity. So once again, thank you from the deepest of our heart for the incredible work that was done and for having organized this seminar and today's meeting. What I will now be doing, since we've already heard about the synergy of uh, seizures and especially focal seizures uh, that only too often are uh, having some fever, this is not the typical febrile uh, crisis uh, and seizures, so only too often the tendency to have febrile seizures disappears sometimes. Uh, now the the patients may suffer from clusters uh, and have a variable duration of clusters. Uh, and not all of the patients have a mental retardation. And we know that the protocaterine deficit uh, was described as epilepsy with mental retardation. And we believe that the, C, the, the, the acronym is not always uh, true because it, the mental retardation is not always there. So we organized this uh, day in Florence. Uh, we've uh, reviewed all of the types of uh, seizures. Uh, and we thought that uh, in most cases uh, it was focal seizures. Uh, and now since we have had the possibility of seeing the video of what seems to be a generalized instead uh, it comes with a focal onset. Uh, and the semiology is an effective uh, semiology because if there are some parents who have seen the seizures of their children, only too often the seizure is uh, triggered by a sense of fear or some stress. The girl seems to be uh, scared, uh, and sometimes it's uh, triggered uh, by the sleep condition. And as far as the region, the anatomical region is concerned, we think that uh, there seems to be a system uh, involving uh, the limbic system uh, and the gyrus system and the frontotemporal areas. It seems important to know that the clinical information seems to be subsumed after a, an appropriate study because otherwise the phenotype we end up with is not the actual one, so we no longer recognize the patients and we can no longer have an early diagnosis. So our interest was not just uh, due to the fact that we are obsessive compulsive uh, people, but rather because we wanted to obtain a pattern, a clinical EEG pattern, which allowed us to recognize uh, the protocaterine reactions in the shortest delay. So in this slide, I was showing the location at frontal level. You can see the gyrus, the cingulate gyrus, and the corpus callosum. And you can see what is the system uh, which is generally and mostly involved in most of our patients. Now let's go back to the treatment. And I believe that this is one of the things that tend to be most interesting to us. Now the objective of the treatment is the one of having the reduction or if not disappearance of seizures, avoiding side effects, uh, which only too often these uh, drugs may provoke. And here we have the objectives. We could. Uh, split them in acute phase and in a chronic phase. Uh, the acute phase is during clusters, and uh, in the other case, we try and prevent the uh, clusters. So according to our own experience and according to the literature, we know, uh, as our colleague was also saying, that the use of benzodiazepine stands to be the best thing, such as uh, micropam or rivotril uh, in drops. Uh, uh, if the crises uh, tend to be more frequent, then uh, the treatment has to be done uh, with uh, uh, midazolam intravenously, dintuin intravenously, or gardenail. And our cases seem to uh, stress the e efficacy of midazolam and dintuin. And as far as uh, bucolam is concerned, uh, uh, we could have uh, another type of use, uh, that is uh, micropam uh, or rivotril. We still need time to establish which one is the most effective drug. 
And uh, in the chronic stage, unfortunately, the stage uh, is that children having drug-resistant seizures, uh, uh, usually these uh, seizures are truly drug-resistant, and there seems to be no combination, uh, drug combination that appears to be more effective than others. We know that uh, there is a sensitivity to fever, and only too often the sensitivity uh, thins down uh, with the increasing age, and uh, the same applies to the frequency. But in general, our experience is that 70% of our patients has a drug-resistant uh, epilepsy, although over the, in the course of time, things tend to improve. There are some anecdotal cases of girls that are free from seizures for um, they're free from seizures because they take a topiramate or any other drugs for many years. And we also know that there are many other combinations of drugs that may be listed down. But these anecdotal cases uh, do not come along with an evidence of a higher e efficacy or of the combination of a drug uh, being best as opposed to another. So we thought that if the drugs don't work in the chronic situation, then maybe we should have a treatment only during the acute stage. Only too often this is what we are being asked, uh, uh, also because of the side effects. Now, obviously, we don't uh, recommend this. Uh, and uh, this is also a question of uh, what may happen in the case of absence of seizures, if the crisis may be uh, very frequent or dangerous. Uh, sometimes uh, you may discuss this uh, in the case of experienced treatments uh, in the acute cases. Out of the analysis of the data uh, that uh, was uh, concerning the 35 girls that were followed up, uh, uh, we did notice that 70% of cases, as I said before, still has some uh, seizures uh, with a weekly, monthly, or yearly frequency. Uh, the monthly frequency is probably accounting for most of the cases. 28% uh, or 30% of them, i.e. a third of them is seizure-free for a period that may run uh, in between one and five years. 34, 35 girls are still taking drug treatments, uh, and the uh, average uh, drug uh, number of drugs taken is uh, two to five. Uh, now, all of these data are only for demonstration purposes, all of the patients with the drugs that were tested, and this is to show that uh, whenever there is a drug resistance, drugs are being tested, all of them, even the last generation drugs, uh, such as Novilum, Ictalim, and uh, other drugs that seem to be very effective. And as I said, here we have a long list of drugs uh, available. And even in the work that was done uh, by our colleagues, uh, French colleagues, uh, we see that there is a list of drugs uh, that's been reported, but there seems to be no efficacy for a uh, drug. Here we have a long list of drugs. Uh, and here we have variable efficacy. This is the slide that was shown by our colleague. And in the acute phase, we know that we are recommending the use of midazolin and phenytoin. In the chronic phase, we have uh, the, a good efficacy with phenytoin uh, combination uh, with bromide, potassium bromide, and frisium. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, let's say that there are no drugs that seem to be preventing different types of crisis. Uh, then we have other data having to do with cortisone. Uh, and uh, let's uh, say that uh, we have no experience, uh, direct experience, uh, especially as to the acute phase uh, and the use of methylprednisolone. Now, this is something that still needs to be checked up. And uh, we certainly know that there is a relationship between epilepsy, hormones, steroids, uh, estrogens in women seem to be increasing the frequency of uh, seizures in general and in all forms of epilepsy, whilst progesterone seems to have uh, the effect of reducing the frequency of seizures. Uh, and then, uh, in the premenstrual uh, phase, the presence of progesterone may be accountable for the seizures. In vivo, progesterone may be converted, as we've heard uh, from Professor Gerzin, into the allopregnanolone, which is uh, uh, active at GABA receptor level. And uh, we know that this is modulating the GABA receptors, so it comes with a potential therapeutic effect. And until now, we could not uh, use a ganaxolone uh, to carry out a uh, pharmacological trial. We know that this is a combination which seems to be very active and is still the object of uh, debates. Uh, there are other studies on different types of epilepsies where the patients were treated with ganaxolone, and this is a 2007 type of uh, work. Uh, 
meaning by this that this is a type of uh, work uh, proving that 50% of the crisis can be avoided in 27% of patients and that in the remaining share there could be a reduction by 20%. Uh, so here again, this is the number of uh, persons involved, which seems to be very small indeed. And uh, in general epilepsy, maybe, and even more so as far as protocadrine is concerned, uh, this is uh, something affecting allopreniol alone, uh, and uh, the effects are still to be proven. This is a study dating back to the year 2000. This was one of the early studies where the children had a spasm-like uh, epilepsy and jerk-like uh, uh, epilepsy. There is a good reduction by 50% of uh, the spasms. Uh, so the drug seems to be excellent, uh, but its efficacy needs to be reassessed uh, after having conducted other studies. We believe that this could prove useful, especially in the girls, uh, uh, and that uh, we would very much like to have a trial with our patients with this drug. Now, let me say that I have no direct experience uh, with girls coming with a mutation of protocadrine, but I have a good experience as far as different types of uh, epilepsy is concerned. Here we see the production of ketonic body, bodies that should uh, be the alternative source uh, uh, to which uh, the brain metabolism seems to be activated so the ketonic bodies are then being uh, transported within the brain so they go through the blood brain barrier and uh, there this is what could bring about uh, an anti epileptic uh, reason the possibility is the one of uh, increasing the glutamate levels and we've heard this many times over so that the ketogenic diet could prove to be very useful in the potentiation of the gavaergic uh, data and uh, I don't know whether we have great that many experiences as to the specific effects, uh, especially with respect to the protocadre in 19. And uh, now, having said this, let me conclude, because uh, I wouldn't really want to be uh, lacking optimism. Uh, uh, let's hope that we will find a targeted efficacy, a similar one, in the very shortest delay. And the treatments that are available until now haven't yet been uh, totally satisfactory. I was concentrating on to the treatment for crisis. Uh, we know that the protocadrine mutation entails many other problems, such as mental retardation, autism. Uh, and there are no treatments, uh, but rather we do have rehab uh, treatments, uh, psychomotor treatments. Uh, and uh, this is. Uh, why I'm saying that this is extremely important, but the best understanding of the mechanisms, uh, uh, such as PCDH19 uh, against epilepsy, cognitive deficits, and autistic disorders is of uh, essential import importance uh, because this is what uh, may entail also reduced side effects, uh, and they are very much important for the targeted therapy. So this is why we hope that we will soon find uh, what are the causative uh, mechanisms of uh, epilepsy. Thank you.